मांडुखी करिका प्रणाम मंत्र ओम भद्रम करणे भीषण व्याम देवा भद्रम पशे माक्ष भीर्य जत्रा स्थिर रंगे सुष्टु आगम सस्तनु भी द्वेषे मदेव हित यदायु स्वस्ति न इंद्रो वृद्ध शवा स्वस्ति न पूषा विश्ववेदा स्वस्ति न स्ताक्षो हरिष्ठ नेमी स्वस्ति नो बृहस्पतिर्दधा ओम शांति 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 सो वी हैव बीन डिस्कसिंग वेरियस थ्योरीज रिलेटेड टू कॉज एंड इफेक्ट and through that we have been discussing how the way each of these philosophies contradict the other the only conclusion is that that actually there is no creation uh, my dear listeners <clears throat> in this in this particular statement that i made the contradictions prove that there is a negation when you are talking about cause and effect when you are talking about various theories of cause and effect the one possibility that comes to fore is that there is no cause and effect it has very serious implications very serious implications now before i begin let me tell you a joke which is actually it's a true incident in one of the american universities once four friends were coming by car and they got delayed and students have a tendency to get delayed when they reached the university the class has naturally started so the professor marked them absent and that would be pretty serious so they made up they had made up a story that there was a puncture tire had punctured so naturally all all four said sir tire had punctured and we got delayed changing the wheel the professor was a very witty person he took out four pieces of paper handed them over to four four of them and said now write down which one of the wheel was punctured front left front right rear left rear right naturally they got caught because see when you when you are telling a lie make sure to have your story complete now the contradictions that will come from that fib made by the by the students those contradictions will point that nothing happened god was using the same argument that look when you say that there is cause and effect and you say that the process of cause and effect is so and so and you are coming up with various theories that only shows that probably there is no cause and effect the important term is probably and then gaurapad goes on to prove why there is no ajatvad and then more importantly says that ajatvad that is non creation has no conflict no quarrel with all these theories because in this relative world in this relative world this is very much possible because it's all game of the mind we shall see vacha rambanam vikaro naam dheyam what we speak of cause and what we speak of cause and effect is actually just a word play just a word play and we saw earlier when karika was explaining the upanishadic statements and was presenting the arguments it showed how actually there is no creation 
now it takes up one philosophy after the other and shows that inherent contradiction inherent contradiction and this concludes that actually these contradictions are because there is no creation now if you start asking questions based on say one single talk you will always have problem so unless you listen from the beginning you will not be able to understand the moment you say that <coughs> there is no cause and effect can you imagine how devastating this statement can be actually there is no cause and effect what are the implications of this first we are always looking for meaning and purpose in life there is no meaning and purpose in life carl jung who was such a great philosopher psychology philosopher psychologist philosopher he had pointed it out that the problem of western culture which is based on semitic religions abrahamic religions that god created this universe at some point of time now god cannot be an irrational being since he is not an irrational being there must be some purpose and so we are actually part of that purpose actually <coughs> this does not come directly from abrahamic religion abrahamic religion itself borrows it from persian religion zoroastrianism there god and devil fight with each other and human beings are used as as supporting soldiers to god and although the conclusion is foregone god will be victorious our mazda will be victorious even then these things will have to be done i see just one simple uh i can say philosophical suggestion just think of all the theories that we have in philosophy whether that be indian philosophy or western philosophy or greek philosophy whatever philosophy you say so we have theory of mind coming out of matter matter coming out of mind and there is fatalism and there is determinism and there is god's will there is this there is that there is see just just imagine the number of conflicts that there are and they can easily be resolved by one simple statement there is no creation अजातवाद अजातिवाद इट्स ऑल्सो नोन है अजातिवाद देर इज नो क्रिएशन द मोमेंट यू से देर इज नो क्रिएशन देर इज द मोमेंट यू से देर इज नो क्रिएशन ऑल दिस थ्योरीज मेक सेंस फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू नो वेरी ऑफ नाउ इट इज आई फाइन इन साइबर वर्ल्ड social media people keep on asking if god is true then why we have so many religions it only shows that religions are mere paths religion is not the ultimate truth it has uh, devastating consequences god alone is truth nothing else that exactly is what the upanishads say is not only about religion religious philosophies and speculative philosophies materialistic philosophy any kind of philosophy you bring any kind of philosophy you'll find that each of these philosophies will be at conflict with the other will be contradicting each other why actually there is no creation this continues sorry <laughs> this continues Now, just to remind, we have Parinam Vad, where effect comes out of the cause. There is Satkarya Vad, where cause itself converts itself into effect. And there is Vedanta's Vivartha Vad, where 
it there appears to be some change but actually there is no change see uh, those of you who are not very familiar with shri ramakrishna's biography and shri ramakrishna's words may find it difficult to grasp because uh, when we take these things to intellectual level sometimes these things become difficult to understand something difficult to grasp in the gospel of shri ramakrishna in bengali it's known as shri ramakrishna katha amrita there are many narrations many narrations when shri ramakrishna is seeing everything as pure consciousness even in his early days when he used to perform worship we see that all these utensils used for the purpose of worship all pure consciousness and he started throwing flowers in all directions because he was seeing consciousness everywhere much later we find in the gospel of shri ramakrishna that he is seeing everything as consciousness there is to be goat sacrifice and he sees everything related to that sacrifice om brahmar pranam brahmavi brahmagno brahmana hutam everything as consciousness if there is something in life my dear listeners if there is something in life that you should strive to experience to get if there is anything in life that i wish to experience and i am being honest is to experience that where you see everything as pure consciousness here is this pen how i wish to see that that there is pure consciousness and it is just a ripple on that infinite ocean of consciousness it is no theory there is no philosophy thing is maybe i am deviating slightly from uh philosophical discussions but let me tell you when it comes to philosophy however the however great the philosopher he will not thump his chest and say i have seen it like this now if you are describing this world if you are just describing this world well then <laughs> i also know it you have a better intellect so you can come up with better explanation but when it comes to god you cannot say that this is the end of it and the great masters who experience that like say say jesus or buddha they don't contradict each other no they don't and when it comes to spiritual realizations no doubt that sri ramakrishna is the last word reason being he went through all these paths and he experienced all these and he says yes indeed all these are truth however advaita is the last word he says advaita that which we are discussing that said now let's get back to this um our philosophy that we have parinamvad satkaryavad and vivartavad now if you accept parinamvad and you accept satkaryavad satkaryavad was discarded because see to remind you once again when you are discussing a philosophy you cannot just make a statement and say that well this is how it goes you have to explain the entire thing philosophy means you have to explain three things god the universe and the individual jeev jagat ishwar is a famous express, expression you simply cannot say that you simply cannot say that well according to me <laughs> sometimes youngsters come to me and uh, they start banging well they'll say well 
According to me, who cares for you? What is your knowledge base? Under whom have you studied? If you are explaining philosophy, and even if it is philosophy of science, you need to explain these three things. Jeev Jagat Ishwar, God, the universe, and the individual. Which means, you have to experience consciousness, you have to, exp you have to explain matter, and you have to explain life. You will say consciousness appearing through matter is life, whatever it is. You, and then you have to have a coherent philosophy. It's not just you pick up something from here and something from there. See, once uh, one gentleman uh, he was a sculptor. He was making statue of Swamiji. So naturally, first there was a clay model. And whenever he made the left side okay, the right side went off. And when he made the right side okay, left side went off. So one expert was called. And he used to take a lot of pan. So he took some pan, started chewing it. And he said he tried. Then the other one says, look, <laughs> you said the right side right. But see, the left side has gone off. It's a very interesting incident to us. I'd heard of it when I was pretty young and loved it. This is what happens. You explain something, the other thing goes away. As they say, there's a very famous joke about Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Heisenberg was a great physicist who gave the famous uncertainty principle. So once he was, uh, once he was charged for speeding, it's a, just a joke. And uh, he was uh, he was asked that by the traffic man, sir, do you know that what is your speed? He says, I know where I am, but I don't know my speed, because according to quantum physics, this is what happens. If you can tell the position of a subatomic particle, you cannot tell the speed at which it's traveling. You catch hold of one. And the other one becomes wild. You explain this world. And as you explain meticulously, you find that the idea of God is slipping away. And that's what is the problem with materialistic philosophy. They are so, so hell-bent on explaining the world that God is going away. And now if you start explaining God too much, the world slips away. However, your philosophy has to be coherent. It does not matter what your philosophy is. That is why Spinoza is considered to be the greatest uh, rationalist because he created a uniform philosophy. And there was a consistency about it. The problem with people who talk, particularly the scientists, they don't have any consistency. They will talk absolutely clearly about, say, some subject or a small part of the subject. But ask them to give the complete picture, they will fail. When people ridicule philosophy, they miss this point. The job of philosophy is to give a complete picture. So, Satkaryavad, it was our Gaurapad objected to it vehemently and said that look, while explaining the universe, you say that Prakriti is eternal. So, and you say that cause itself becomes effect. Which means the eternal has become non-eternal. And not only that it has become non-eternal, it has become non-eternal simultaneously at so many places. It doesn't stand to reason. And then, it takes up Parinamavad, cause and effect relationship. And Mimangsak, philosophy of Mimangsa, they are really masters of philosophy. Cause gives birth to effect, and then effect gives birth to cause, and that is being attacked. 
And if you believe in that, you end up believing that father gives birth to son and in turn, son gives birth to father. So now this, this continues. Karika asks, tell me which one came first? Or were they produced simultaneously? Naturally, there is cause and there is effect. And you say that they are related. And they are related in such a way that cause gives birth to effect and effect births, effect gives birth to cause. So either something came earlier or both of them came simultaneously like the famous hen and egg problem. See, hen and egg problem can be solved very easily if you say that there is no creation. But it's so counterintuitive that it's so counterintuitive you don't feel like accepting it. So he says, verse number 17, Falat utpadyamana sanna te hetu prasidyati o prasidda katam hetu phalam utpa daishyati. The cause that you affirm cannot be established as the cause if it is produced from the effect. Cause gives birth to effect and effect again gives birth to cause. For example, our uh, Mimamsa will say that our body is product, product of dharma, good and bad that we have performed. In turn, this body produces dharma. So there is dharma, there is body and dharma comes again. So it, verse number 17 contradicts it and says, the cause that you affirm, we are talking about cause. It cannot be established as the cause if it is produced from the effect. Cause means cause. Like we say that God is the cause of everything. As President Roosevelt had famously uh, a notice put up on his desk. The buck stops here. Passing the buck. In bureaucracy, this is a favorite thing. Those of you who have some experience with the bureaucrats, you know that they keep on passing the buck. That is not taking the responsibility. So Roosevelt had this written on his table. The buck stops here. Now, president cannot pass it on to somebody. Somewhere you have to say, here it ends. God is the ultimate cause. Now, the way you people are talking, there is no cause. And if the cause is produced from the effect, then it cannot be any cause. So how can the cause which itself is not established give birth to the effect? No. This is another funny argument. Not funny, funny in the sense that it sounds, it makes you laugh. You, that On the one hand, you say that there is a cause. And yet, cause itself is not established. How can if there be an effect? When you are talking about hen and egg, first you decide which one is which is one is the real cause. You will say that well, we cannot. You know there are many scientific papers which are uh, still discussing on which one really came earlier. Once I was reading one paper and there it was say that it is confirmed that the egg came first through evolution. So. Hen is producing the egg and egg is producing the hen and you cannot say which one came first. That proves that cause itself is not fixed. If cause itself is not fixed, how can there be any effect? And neither cause is fixed and nor can it produce any effect. How can there be cause and effect? Actually, this argument is absolutely simple. Some of you may find it difficult. But sometimes I find people write it's difficult, but no, it's not difficult. And because we are seeing these arguments in parts, so maybe these arguments are not making the necessary impact on you. But if you see in totality, the whole picture will become clear that what Karika is saying is that there is no creation as such. God existed, God exists, God will continue to exist. Everything else that you see, 
by god pure consciousness whatever whatever else you are seeing is just the play of mind where from this mind comes the moment you say where from this mind comes you are going into the question of cause and effect i tell you <laughs> when i was a young monk i used to go meet one senior monk shiva swami mokshadan ji maharaj regularly at least once a week definitely and uh, there was a period when i was uh, in the same building with him for more than 6 months and he was an old uh, by then he had grown old with no work and as he luck would have i had no work for those 6 months so naturally i used to go twice thrice to his room sit and talk and whenever i broached these discussions he would always tell me just one thing that look once again you are falling in the same pit of duality like we have some listeners here who keep on asking okay so who gave birth to this for example when you say god gives birth to all your next question will be who gave birth to god who is the father of god what should be your answer i forget about giving answers to all these people who are on social media and shouting and screaming what is the answer to you yourself simple answer god is beyond god is beyond cause and effect so this question doesn't make sense question is invalid fair enough however the same argument is applicable to everything where from has the mind come we are back to the game of cause and effect where from maya has come you see nowadays uh, we have some speakers who have made went vedanta extremely popular and uh, there are people who listen to those and they come asking us oh it's all beautiful but where from the maya came where from maya came the problem with is with us is that we are so badly trapped in this riddle of cause and effect totally totally we are trapped in this cause and effect so we are looking for cause and effect although cause and effect itself doesn't exist number 1 number 2 even if you don't believe that cause and effect cannot be asked about certain things in the famous episode between gargi and yagya valkya Gargi went on asking questions to Yagyal just like that, and suddenly Yagyal stopped him, saying, "Look, Gargi, if you keep on asking questions without understanding, your head will fall in thousand pieces." God is the substratum of all. Now, what is the substratum of God? Basically, what you are doing is you are asking questions which have no meaning. Karika goes one step beyond and says, "There is actually no cause and effect. The cause and effect that you see is actually your imagination." That's the verse number seventeen. That, that your cause itself is not established. Then how can it give birth to some effect? and you are talking about cause and effect so when we keep on talking about karma vad when we keep on talking about karma phal when we say that it was all my karma we don't even realize that actually there is no cause and effect worse there is no purpose in life there is no meaning to life there is no goal to life then we are the meaning of life we are the cause and effect of life because i alone exist for you you alone exist and i and you 
they are not only non different this not even this even this question of difference non difference doesn't arise so yadi hetu falat siddhi falat siddhi shu hetu ta number 18 कतरत पूर्व निष्पन्न सिद्धि अपेक्षया इफ द कॉज इज प्रोड्यूस्ड फ्रॉम द इफेक्ट एंड द इफेक्ट इज अगेन प्रोड्यूस्ड फ्रॉम द कॉज विच ऑफ द टू इज बॉर्न फर्स्ट अपॉन विच डिपेंड्स द बर्थ ऑफ द अदर समथिंग दैट वी डिस्कस्ड अर्लियर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अर्लियर सो वी आर नॉट गोइंग इन टू द डिटेल एंड वी कम डाउन टू नंबर नाइनटीन अशक्ति अपरिज्ञान करम क्रम कोपो अथवा पुनः एवं ही सर्वदा बुद्धे अजाति परिदीपिता द इनएबिलिटी टू रिप्लाई टू द क्वेश्चन रेज्ड एवर ऑफ ऑल दिस डिस्कशन दैट वी आर हैविंग द इग्नोरेंस अबाउट द मैटर एंड द इंपॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ एस्टैब्लिशिंग द ऑर्डर ऑफ सक्सेशन यू कैन नॉट एस्टैब्लिश द ऑर्डर ऑफ सक्सेशन यू नो वेरी ऑफन व्हेन पीपल गो टू द कोर्ट्स पर्टिकुलर द हायर कोर्ट्स in case of property disputes it's about succession problem who succeeds whom whose property it should be succession if the causal relation is admitted clearly lead the wise to uphold under all conditions the doctrine of ajati non creation because of all these confusion that we have which came first which came later which gave what to what and uh, how is possible that cause itself becomes effect how can cause give birth to effect and then effect itself becomes cause and you don't know which came earlier which came later the discussion doesn't end here it says that because of all these problems those who are wise they know that this world is not the last place they show cause and effect is not the ultimate truth is not the inviolable truth the ultimate truth is there is no creation the ultimate truth is there is no cause and effect it can be so disturbing <laughs> so disturbing so disturbing i'll just give you a break Let me see. In case you have any question, please ask. Uh, I don't think there is any question. No. Actually, we have been discussing this so many times that I am sure that slowly the ideas are seeping inside. Karika says. you people are contradicting each other and shows that none of you is correct and if the theory of unborn and nothing is born is accepted there is no problem and that theory of unborn this has been explained earlier so then comes verse number 20 which is very interesting because uh, what we have been discussing like cause and effect etc and father and son son and father those people raise objections that is mimamsa actually these uh, these objections are raised by the writer himself and uh, it is as if this question could have been raised by that particular philosophy what is that say that look you vedantins you have over simplified things when we talk about cause and effect it's not like father and son it's more like seed and sprout it's obvious that tree is produced from seed and tree produces seed seed and sprout the expression is bijankur bij and ankur ankur is sprout and bij is seed
cause and effect. They are not born simultaneously in the sense that two horns of a cow are born simultaneously. Bijankurak, 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 Kyo, Dishtanta, Sada Sadhya Samohi Saha, Nahi Sadhya Samohetu, Siddho Sadhya Sya, Yujyate. The illustration of the seed and the sprout is something which is yet to be proved. The illustration, that is the middle term, which itself is not yet proved, cannot be used for establishing a proposition to be proved. These are the terminologies used in Nyaya Shastra, that is arguments. The beginning statement, the middle and the end. Says, Those who believe in cause and effect, they say that the right illustration is that of a seed and sprout. In reply, Karika says, Bijan Kurakyo Dishtanta Sada Sadhya Samohi Saha. The illustration of the seed and the sprout is something which is yet to be proved. Why it is yet to be proved? When you talk about seed and sprout, the problem is that you think that the series of seed and sprout, these are kind of eternal, beginningless, in the sense that you cannot reach the beginning. For example, those of you who know about hen and egg, you will say that this series has been going on, going on in cycle, so you cannot really say which one came first. Those who believe in Paridamba, those who believe in cause and effect, raise this objection. The idea is, this has been going on eternally, so you cannot say that which one began in the beginning. The expression is Adiman, beginningless. Na Adiman. So both seed and sprout are Adiman. Since the beginning is going on, Karika says, fine, nothing wrong with it. But then where is their unity? If you say that seed and sprout, this series has been going on since beginning. Somewhere they have to be united. Where is the unity? Where is the unity? Worse, whosoever has heard of such a series, there is no such example. Why are you talking such things? Which has no. There is no proof of any such beginninglessness. That is though there is no beginning. Why? See, because the very idea of birth, when you talk of the idea of birth, that itself is born of avidya. Who causes avidya, as Ramanuja famously asked? That's your problem, that you keep on asking about the cause, where there is no cause and effect. It's just a statement of fact, it's there. Just, uh, I'll pause for a minute to make you understand one simple thing that we are so accustomed to seeing patterns. And because of patterns, we are so accustomed to asking this question, who, why, how? Who gave birth to this effect? There was a cause. And who gave birth to that cause? We keep on asking who, who, or why, why, etc. Ultimately, it just goes on. But no. It has to stop somewhere. Our training has been such that uh, we cannot accept that. And that's why real philosophy is different from this logical philosophy, speculative philosophy, whatever philosophy it might be. Karika refuses it and says that, no, look. When you say that it's more like seed and sprout, cause and effect, they have been going on eternally. No. 
neither it makes any sense nor it unites anywhere and nor has one ever seen any such thing in this world so the every possible explanation for cause and effect has been negated and because of their inner conflict they say inter conflict intra conflict the conclusion is that actually there is no creation how purva par parigyanam ajate paridipakam jayamanat hi vai dharmat katham purvam na grihyate things are now becoming easy so we can go a little fast the ignorance the ignorance regarding the antecedents and the subsequence of cause and effect clearly proves the absence of creation there is absolutely no idea which came first there is absolutely no idea which came later what all this proves simply there is no creation there is a simplest way if the jiva that is jiva dharma has really been born then where uh, then why cannot you point the antecedent cause here is me ultimately it's not about the world like uh, we had our mr burns in the previous talk he was talking about big bang and series of big bang more importantly it's me it's not about explaining the universe it's not about explaining the objects in the universe the important thing is me so you have to explain where from have i come the antecedents and the subsequence which one came earlier which which came later this has to be explained very clearly but there is no such knowledge we have absolutely no idea about all this there is no clear answer by anyone any of the philosophies as i mentioned just now every philosophy has to explain jeev jagat ishwar you have to explain where from i have come who i am if you cannot give a very clear answer for example there are certain systems of religious philosophy they say that it was all god's will god will and it was there now this is no no answer simple question where from i came from my father and where from my father came from there. it goes on and on and ultimately there is no answer see if you start thinking rationally if you really start going backward and backward you suddenly find that there is no local standi there is nothing on which you can stand and ultimately you it leaves you with one simple conclusion there is no creation idea being i am non different from god taking the argument slightly offside uh, those of you who are listening i'm sure that you have some knowledge about uh, vedant and you must have heard some of these talks from here and there and uh, you must have uh, at some point of time parroted around i am brahman aham brahmasmi do you realize that the moment you say aham brahmasmi and for that matter anyone who says aham brahmasmi and worse anyone who says i am son of god i am god's child actually the implication of such state of every such statement is that there is no creation there was no creation there were never was any creation just think can you imagine think <coughs> you see i have heard some of these speakers i mean in discussion i never listen to other talk no when even say books like vedanta sar when they are trying to explain aham brahmasmi they will say that take away the upadhis superimpositions like once i was uh, i was a new brahmachari in those days novice 
and I had been to Haridwar for the first time. That was long, long back. I was going by a rickshaw and in Haridwar and in such places, uh, even the rickshaw wallers, they are paid some money to take these travelers to particular ashram so that uh, they can be made disciples. So he started uh, delivering me talk and first thing he said that, look, you have to forget that I'm a rickshaw puller. And you also must forget that you are a passenger. Only then a conversation is possible. Oh God, I started laughing. I understood that he's going to give me big. And he gave me big. He went on talking this and that. But then that's interesting that a rickshaw puller in Haridwar is talking about Vedanta. That's really lovely. And then he said that, look, if you want to learn more about it, you can come to our ashram. So I understood what he means. actually. But anyway, the idea that if you want to listen to me, if you really want to appreciate, you have to forget that I am a rickshaw puller and you have to forget that I am a passenger. This is the kind of argument that Vedanta often uses to prove that I am Brahmasmi. Fair enough. Nothing wrong with it. It's not only about superimposition. You also need to think of certain conclusions. And one of the very important conclusions that comes out of this statement and even from the statement that Son of God, like Jesus. Jesus is Son of God. I cannot, I mean, <laughs> for the safety of all, I cannot discuss many other religions. People take off in so easily. Even if you say that we are children of God, God is pure consciousness. If I am children of God, I have to be pure consciousness. That means we have to be one with God. Which means, automatically it means there is no creation. Because, see, the entire discussion of Vedanta is simple, very simple. The individuality that you are seeing, is it true or is it false? Here is my pen. I and my pain, these are two different things. We know it. A cow knows that the cow is separated from the grass and that's why it goes eating. Any ordinary person knows very well that he is different from the world. And that's why it says, Yusmat Asmat Pratyaya Gochar. The idea of me, subject, and the idea of the world, the object, it is eternally different, like light and darkness. You don't need to philosophy to know that these two are eternally different. However, forget about all these discussions that we are having. Forget about the great statements of Vedanta. The simple thing, simple thing that we often use. Tomeva mata cha pita tomeva. Most Hindu kids know it since birth. Oh father, oh dear, oh, oh dear God, you are my father, you are my mother. That means I am your child. If I am your child, I have to have your nature. If I have to be your nature, <coughs> I have to be pure consciousness. That is, Jeev has to be related to Brahman. In whatever form. Whether you call spark and fire, or you call ocean and drop, or you call just oneness. What's the conclusion? There is no creation because there is no separateness. Creation will always mean separateness. Creation means separateness. There cannot be any separateness. There is no creation. Actually, argument is very simple. It's absolutely simple. However, those who are gross materialists, gross materialists, those who do not believe in God and can't even prove the non-existence of God. Because if you say that there is no God, you have to prove. You have to prove lots of things. They don't. Person like, persons like Richard Dawkins, they go on taking examples from here and they show that there is no God. What about Sri Ramakrishna? Do you call him raving mad? 
what about Swami Vivekananda? I don't think that Richard Dawkins is <coughs> any way more influential than Swami Vivekananda was on millions of lives. And if Swami Vivekananda could influence millions of lives, if he could change lives, I must know what was his life philosophy. His life philosophy says that God is true. It's not only that Sri Ramakrishna is telling God is true, even his disciple who gave a major shake to India. Yes, God is true. Why shouldn't I believe him? Look at his power. Look at his majesty. And look at the words of all the great masters who were in the past. Why should I be believing Richard Dawkins and not believe these greats? So he says, whenever you are discussing cause and effect, you have to talk about the relationship between the creator and the created. And because you are not able to tell very clearly, it only proves that there is no creation. As I said, forget all these arguments. There's a very simple thing. You should believe in God because at this stage, uh, you have to just believe in God. And when you go on practicing, as you go deeper and finally when you realize God, you will know that God is true. When you study physics, chemistry, etc., you believe in the words of your teachers and that's how you proceed. The same with spirituality. <coughs> you do not go on questioning everything when you enter a subject. You can keep those questions in the back of your mind. When the time comes, you can test it. But if you go on asking that from the beginning itself, you cannot proceed. Sato va parato vapi na kinchi the vasu jayate. Sad asad. Sad asad vapi na kinchi the vasu jayate. It gives a terrible blow to the theory of cause and effect. Nothing whatsoever is born. Nothing. Either of itself or of another reality. Nothing is ever produced, whether it be being or non-being, or both being and non-being. says, nothing is ever born. A pot doesn't give birth to a pot. Cloth doesn't give birth to cloth. And cloth and pot mixed together, do not give birth to a pot. So, says, Tave shabda pratyo viveki vi parikshate king satyam eva tavut pusheti. When we talk about creation, when we say that such and such person gave birth to a son. He has a son. When we talk about this kind of creation, this appears only to foolish people, not to the wise. Those of you who have studied Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, remember that once Sri Ramakrishna was talking to some of his devotees, and slowly Sri Ramakrishna was... Uh, Entering one of his bhava, <coughs> when he was, uh, he would, his mind would become extremely internalized. And uh, at that time, somebody said that there's a great saint Pavari Baba, and he has kept a photograph of yours. And Sri Ramakrishna says that of this shell. But it's like a shell, it's not born or anything. Photograph, that photograph cannot be of mine. Photograph of is of this external cell. Do 
It's only the foolish, foolish people who think of creation as being real. See, look, no one is questioning creation here. Creation is very much there. Thing is, does that created thing or created being have an individuality, a true individuality? Is it separate from everything else? Because if it is connected, then it's not creation. To be creation as we normally understand, it has to be separate. You say, what about uh, a mom giving birth to a child, a baby? There is a separate being. Yes. But when, once you start pushing things the way we have been pushing, then you realize that there can never be any creation. And that's why the idea of this, everything in this world, this is giving birth to that and that is giving birth to that. These are all notions. In reality, nothing such thing happens. And that's why Vedanta was actually meant for the monks. Because when you are living in this world, you cannot talk like this. Sri Ramakrishna illustrated this beautifully uh, with uh, the parable of a farmer who lost his son. And uh, he was informed he came and he didn't shed a tear. And when his wife scolded him for being such a cruel person, he said, look, last night I had a dream <laughs> in which I saw myself to have become a king and having seven kids. When the sleep broke, everything was gone. I'm just wondering for whom should I be shedding the tears? For the one or for those seven. Gat putradi lakshanam shabda matram evam tat. When we say that pot was created, sun is born, these are all vacha arambanam. This comes in Chandogya Upanishad. Vacha arambano vikaranam dhyam. Everything that appears before us, they are just name and form. And name and form. Name and form are products of mind. In reality, nothing is created. Because in reality, if something had been created, the cause and effect relation would have been established permanently, perfectly, absolutely. That has not been done. Shows what? These are all word play. These are all just play of Name and form, nothing more than that. And it gives a concluding blow. Anything that is Sat, true existence, it can never be born. If it is existing, how it can be born? And if there is something which is Asat, which does not exist, how can it be born? That's why Gita beautifully says, Na sato vidyate bhavo, na bhavo vidyate sata. Sat, pure existence, can never cease to exist. Asat, which does not have existence, can never come into existence. So how can you even talk about something being born and something dying? Sat. Sat is always existing, so you cannot say that it was ever born. Asat, by its very definition, cannot be born. So who gets born? By whom? Then you say, they would find what about Sat, Asat combination? No, it cannot be. Why? Same thing cannot have two contradicting nature. You cannot say that it is Sat and Asat both simultaneously. What about Kshanik Vigyanavad? <laughs> These things have become very popular in the West. You know, America is a wonderful place. It takes up any idea you know, and goes on shouting about it. Rudyard Kipling. Rudyard Kipling. His famous jungle book. Talks about Bandar Log. They'll take up something. The moment something 
comes to their head, they'll immediately catch and start jumping about it. And say, Buddhism, Buddhism is, that's the true religion. And there's one book, Sapiens, somebody gave me to read. I realize that this gentleman, he gives wonderful information, but conclusions are hopeless. He also said that Buddhism is the only futuristic religion, God knows. Says that when Buddhists talk about Kshanik Vijnanavad, that temporary consciousness, fleeting consciousness. So it says that one moment you say it is there, another moment you say it's not there. What kind of philosophy are you discussing? How can something that exists become non existent? And says, Oh, it's a long sentence, means experience of a person requires continuation. When I see something, when I experience something, it has to continue in my mind. You say that one minute it was born, next minute it was gone. How can there be a continuation of memory? That we have a continuation of memory. You see, great persons like Vigyan, Vikshu and all, they have uh, answered all this. But for us, it's a very simple way we are just explaining. That no, it's not that easy. You cannot come up with this philosophy and that philosophy and say that what I am saying is correct. Because if you have to explain everything, then you will find that you tie up certain things and some other loose ends will come out. Bottom line is, if a thing exists, it cannot be born. If a thing truly doesn't exist, it can never be born. In either case, there can be no creation. Well, I think we have crossed our time. Thank you so much. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti.